What's going on everybody? It's your boy JP back again with another video. Today I bring to y'all the one and only Pixel 6a. This is the sage color here. It's absolutely gorgeous. It um it looks and and, and even feels like glass. The first couple of reviews that actually came out of this phone earlier in the week before it actually hit retail even even said it was glass and then and then some of the reviewers some of the reviewers actually had to uh go into they had to edit the description in their videos to correct themselves that it was that it was in fact plastic and not glass and um uh, honestly I would have probably made that same mistake I'm sure I have made that mistake before but I do remember back in when was it April or May whenever Google actually announced the Pixel 6a which in my opinion was just entirely too early I'm sure a lot of people actually I know a lot of people agree with me on that um, but um, I do remember them you know saying that it you know or, or having it listed that it was uh, that it was plastic in the back but again you can't tell I um, I used the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro for a couple of months and uh this this phone feels this phone feels almost just as good if not as good as those phones without a case. I mean it feels I mean it feels great. Um of course those also had metal um um you know the sides were metal on those um and I'm sure the side on this is is plastic instead of metal. Um but nonetheless, you, you're you're not going to excuse the stuttering. I, I I'm doing that because I'm honestly at a loss of words for how great this phone feels, the build quality, given that it's that it is just plastic, you know, not just on the back but on the sides as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, I could be wrong about the sides because uh, it does have the the antenna bands, almost like almost like. Um, phones with with uh, metal frames do because on a plastic frame they don't need the antenna bands on a glass frame they don't need the antenna bands but on metal they do so um and 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 again i could be wrong about that as well um there may be phones with plastic frames that have the antenna bands like that but none that i can think of off the top of my head and i've had a bazillion phones so um i honestly am second guessing whether or not the frame is plastic as well like the back uh because with those bands the way that they are the way that they're designed that is that is something that's that's more common with metal phones with you know at least with metal frames anyways but i'm not gonna stay stuck on that too long if anybody wants to correct me in the comments please do um you won't offend me one bit uh you know i i do want to i do want to you know move along here the um you know obviously obviously the pixel 6a is for those that want the flag a flagship processor and flagship cameras you know without the flagship price and they are okay with sacrificing other flagship features that you would get on otherwise much higher priced you know actual flagship devices you know like a pixel 6 pro or you know or a uh you know or a, a galaxy you know a, a galaxy s20 a galaxy s22 plus um you know and i say the galaxy s22 plus instead of the galaxy instead of the standard galaxy s22 because that's a compact phone like this is 6.1 inches and it's significant and even and that is more is significantly more expensive than this phone. I mean that's still like an $800 phone. I mean I'm sure you can get it on sale for 600 or 700, but its MSRP is $800 and I I certainly would not. Now everyone knows I'm not the biggest Samsung fan, but I'm also not a Samsung hater. I did have the standard S22 and it was actually a great phone, but there was there's no way that I would choose the uh, the galaxy the, the galaxy s22 the standard s22 over the pixel 6a um i mean you, you you're not you know th this phone is significantly cheaper it's going to perform you know 
I wouldn't, I, you know, it's gonna, it's not gonna perform as good. You know, the S22 series as a whole, they do have the uh, Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor. Um, you know, and this has the Tensor processor from last year, so this is more comparable to, you know, to the, the Snapdragon 888. Um, you know, and, and, you know, and even in, the, even in, you know, have the benchmarks out, um, it's still, it, it you know, kind of shows that it's, e it's either in line with the 888 or scores a little less than the 888. But it's definitely more powerful than the 870. Uh, which in itself is a is a is a fantastic processor. Uh, it is you know it's it's actually slightly newer than the 888. It was announced uh, a month after the 888 in uh, January of 2021. You know, of course it's dated itself. Um, you know, but um, but nonetheless the uh, I mean you know because you know the the Tensor does have its advantages even over the 8 Gen One. Um, you know, because the 888 had a had a Cortex X1 core, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 has a Cortex X2 core, but the Tensor had two Cortex X or has I don't know why I said had, but the Tensor has two Cortex X1 cores. So you know, and and I I don't I it's kind of like with some of your MediaTek Dimensity processors. I don't think. A lot of these benchmarks are actually able to to fully, you know, dig out the power of these specific processors, and and uh, and you know, and I don't I don't really think you're seeing it as a as a whole, if you will, um, if that makes any sense. Um, the because uh, the Tensor, it just it in my test last year when I had gotten the the Pixel Six. It had performed as good as the Red Magic 6S Pro performed. Uh, well, not the 6S Pro, but the six, the Red Magic 6 Pro, which had the Snapdragon 888. The 6S Pro had the had the 888 Plus. Uh, but um, you get where I'm going at with this. This is you know this is you know flagship level you know technology here. Uh, I mean, Tensor is not even a year old. It it, you know, obviously, it came out with the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, and those weren't released until November of last year, or it might have been late October. I think it was late October, actually. No, no, no. I think it was, I think it was early November. Don't remember exactly, but late October, early November, we're still, I mean, you know, we're, you know, it's it's not, we're still several months off from it being a year old. And uh, and Tensor is, is still very much relevant. Um, and... This is just uh, you know for the price four forty nine it is unbeatable. Uh, it does have you know six gigs of RAM, only one hundred twenty eight gigs internal, no expandable memory, unfortunately. Um, you know, but for the price, I expect that. Um, you know, uh, it does have it does have um, your it does have two camera lenses here. It does have your flash, um, and these aren't these. Neither of these lenses, I don't think, are actually taken um, from any that are found on the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. I could be wrong about that. Again, y'all know I'm not the biggest when it comes to... I'm not, I'm not the uh, the most knowledgeable when it comes to camera tech. Because um, I think I read somewhere that this is the same... That, you know, it's the same lens that... The same two lenses that were found possibly on the on the Pixel 5a or, or you know, or the Pixel 5. Um... But of course, you you have that amazing software, and you have the features that were introduced with the Pixel Six series, like Magic Eraser, which is my personal favorite. It is absolutely amazing. It's here on the Pixel Six A. This may not have the lenses of the flagship sixes, but it has the flagship software features. And um, every review I've seen, because I haven't really taken it, I haven't really put it through its paces yet. I got it a day before retail. I was supposed to get it two days before retail, but it got lost with FedEx. And uh, and before anyone dogs out FedEx and talks about how bad they are, I actually normally have really good luck with FedEx. Uh, it's UPS that uh, I've, I've had more issues with than FedEx, um, honestly. Uh, but, uh, I mean, the day before I got this, I got my Steam Deck. Uh, 
hashtag Steam Deck, Team Steam Deck, whatever you want to have you want to say it. I may do a review on it. But um, I was actually supposed to get this the same day as that, but again, it got lost. <laughs> but I did get it the next day. No big deal. You know, I'll get over it. Um, but um, you know, you don't. You know, you only get 18 watt charging. Some still consider that fast charging. It technically is considered fast charging, but it's not really. It's not really fast charging in terms of modern day, unfortunately. Um, you know, um, even your Galaxy S22, I think, had 22 watt fast charging or something like that. Um, but you know, it, it's it's um, you know, it it's. I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> I don't really know what else to say there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, of course, in the box, you don't even get the charging brick. You do get your USB Type-C to Type-C cable. It's not a USB-A to USB-C. It's USB-C on both ends. But you also get your USB-C to 35 millimeter headphone jack adapter, which is really cool that they do include that at least because this is the first Pixel A series device without a headphone jack. Uh, but it does have stereo speakers. It does have an IP rating. Um, the phone is blazing fast. It is only 60 hertz, but it's only a 6.1 inch screen. It is full HD plus. Um, you know, I'm I'm using a, a phone with a 144 hertz refresh rate recording this. Um, I have a Red Magic 7s Pro coming in in a couple weeks. That'll have, well, the pros and those only have 120 hertz, not 165. Because they have the in-display camera technology. But I did have the regular Red Magic 7 that had the 165 hertz uh, refresh rate. You know, um, I had the Motorola's with the 144, the Redmi's with the 144, the Pogo's, etc. Um, you know, but this phone is just as fluid as can be. The first couple of reviews that I saw on this phone that came out, they talked about the stuttering. I haven't experienced any stuttering at all. And... Those reviewers, they even they, they they even admitted that it may just be them because they're so used to phones with higher refresh rates. And I, I'd like to think that I'm one of those people as well, but I don't notice the stuttering in this phone. I mean, it's it's fantastic. I mean, it, it's just it's 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 blazing. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, if you told me this had a ninety hertz uh, a ninety hertz refresh rate like like the regular Pixel Six had, I'd believe you. Like, I just I don't. It's it's incredible. I, I haven't... I mean, look at that. Show me where the stuttering is. I, I don't... You know... I mean, you know, I'm recording this in 60 frames per sec, 1080. Um, you know, but... So, obviously, you wouldn't catch that it's, you know, 90 hertz on camera. But you would still catch the stuttering. You know, and that's... It's, it's just non-existent. Non-existent. This phone is just... Has been a beast. This phone has ran just as fast as my Pixel 6 and 6 Pro did. Uh, with the smaller screen, it's pushing more pixels per inch, um, and 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 because it's not having to push as high as high of a of a resolution, it's going to actually benchmark a little higher than the 6 and 6 Pro, especially against the 6 Pro because it's so much bigger. You know, because you're you know you're 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 talking a 6.4 inch Pixel 6, and then the Pro is. I think the Pro was a 6.7 inch or 6.8. I don't think it's 6.8. I think it's 6.7, but it doesn't matter. It's not that big of a difference. But um, nonetheless, um, this phone is just, you know, just been blazing fast. Here's the back of the box there. Nothing really special to really look at there. But, um, you know, of course, the box right there kind of advertises Tensor. You know, Pixel 6a, Google Tensor. Um you know, it does have the uh, the 20 core Mali GPU, um, and I mean this this phone has just been th this phone's amazing. I mean, I haven't even had it for 24 hours, but uh, oh well, wait, yeah, I have, yeah, I've had it for 48 hours because I got it the day before retail, as I just said, uh, and retail was yesterday. But um, I um, considering that I don't have my Pixel 6 or 6 Pro anymore. This is definitely a breath of fresh air with all of the devices that I have had this year that I have reviewed. And, and remember, I don't even I don't even do video reviews on every device I get. Most of them, but not all of them. Um, which I'll, I'll get to that in a second here. Um, there's really not a whole lot to really you know talk here. You know, it's really just me mumbling. Um, you know, because the unboxing is you know very 
you know, generic. It's it's not a great unboxing with these right here. You don't get a ton. It's not really a ton ton to show off. But um, yeah, this phone is is amazing. Um, at four hundred and at four hundred and and four hundred and fifty bucks, you're not even gonna find a phone this good even at five hundred. I mean, this this phone is just absolutely amazing. It's it's gonna play your games. Six gigs of RAM is not you know uh you know a bad amount of RAM. I mean, I realized the you know, realized it was just the Pixel 6 when Google actually stepped their RAM game up, you know, and they gave it 8 gigs of RAM because before that, the flagships, if I'm not mistaken, still only had up to 6 gigs of RAM. The Pixel 5, not the 5a, but the Pixel 5, you know, had, you know, 6 gigs of RAM. You know, the Pixel 4 was 6 gigs of RAM, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not even going into the A-series devices, just the, the mainline flagships, um, you know, um, you know, e even when they were using the Snapdragon 800 series processors, they were still only getting six gigs of RAM. Um, and that was the, the Pixel 4, you know, because it had what the Snapdragon um, 855. Because I think when it was time to use the 865, that was when they ended up using the 765 for the Pixel 5. But I may, I may have that mixed up somewhere. Um, but, um, but, of course, you know, they've gotten away from using Qualcomm altogether and they use their own their own fab well, they're fabricated by Samsung, but it's their own design with Tensor. And uh, you know, and of course, I mean even the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 was fabricated by Samsung. So, you know, that's, that doesn't mean that, you know, it's doesn't necessarily mean it's a Samsung design. Of course, these are close to an Exynos processor from what the uh, from what the internal documents suggest. Uh, but it definitely outperforms any Exynos that I've used. Um, including the Exynos found in the in the International Galaxy S twenty twos from what I've from what I've at least seen on YouTube, um, but I mean um you know it's this is this is kind of like you know this is I wouldn't even say that this is the iPhone SE three of Android. I mean uh, you know the the iPhone SE three you do get the latest uh, you know uh, Bionic you know. Uh, processor i have an se3 i i just forgot which uh which number we're on uh i think it's what the a15 you know and uh and you know it it does get you know um it you know it does have a you know for for what it is you know because uh, because that's actually a little cheaper that costs a uh, hundred that costs 430 dollars i think um 420 or 430 um and it, and it has a fantastic camera itself i wouldn't i wouldn't put it i wouldn't say it's as great as the camera on here but you know some may disagree uh, but the reason why you know I, I wouldn't necessarily call this the iphone se3 for android you know or android's iphone se3 and i specifically say the se3 and not the other se's because it has 5g it has the apple a15 uh, you know, and, and, and the Tensor is, is a flagship processor. You know, again, Google got away from using flagship processors in the Pixels for a couple of years or for a year and a half. You know, um, you know, between the release of the Pixel 5 and then the release of the Pixel 5a. Um, and then, and then you know, and of course the 6 and now the 6a's, you know, which, which you know, they don't use mid-range themselves but they don't use top of the line Qualcomm anymore they have again I, I know I'm repeating myself they now use their own top of the line premium chipset and um you know I would honestly put the Pixel 6a more closer you know closer to the to the uh to the vanilla iPhone 13 because you know the iPhone because the iPhone 13 has is is an all isn't you know is an all the screen is an all display you know, phone. This is you know full screen. You know, uh, you know the iPhone 13 has its notch, and this has the punch hole on it. Um, you know, whereas the SE3, it's it's based on an old on the old iPhone 8 design. You know, so you have the 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 huge bezels. You know, top and bottom, the chin. You know, to facilitate the you know Touch ID because it's not built into the screen. You know, um, this to me is more like an iPhone, an Android iPhone 13 than you know an iPhone SE3. Price wise, yes, iPhone SE three, uh, but spec wise, iPhone thirteen. You know, yes, I realize the SE three and the thirteen have the same processor, but the thirteen again has the all display. You know, it's it's you know, um, it's you know the, the the screen to body ratio is just is is you know so much smaller than that of the SE. Um, 
you know, it's it's just um, it just has a you know the 13 is a much more modern design than the SE3, and this here is a is again it is a modern design, and um, you know and 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 you know the 13 itself doesn't have the you know the ProMotion screen. It's 60 hertz as well, just like this is. It's an OLED, just like this, 6.1 inches. Um, you know, um, it's um, you know they're just uh, to me it's just it's more comparable to the 13. While having the SE3's price tag, you know, well, twenty dollars more than the SE3, but you know, what's that? I mean, you know, it's just, you know, you're just, you know, all in all, the Pixel 6a is just, it's just an unbeatable package. That's basically where I'm going at with this. I know I'm just mumbling on. I'm not trying to bore anybody. The unboxing to these are just unborn. They're just, I almost said unboring. <laughs> the unboxing to these are just boring. I mean, you know, um, but. Nonetheless, it's, I mean, you know, it is what it is. You know, um, I'm not saying it's for everybody, but this phone can definitely be used as a daily driver. It does not have to just be a backup phone. This phone has everything you need to be a daily driver. It is fantastic. Again, it's a breath of, it's a breath of fresh air. You know, it's stock Android 12 out of the box. It's going to get Android. Did I say iPhone? Did I say iPhone 12? Y'all, yeah, I'm sorry. You don't have to excuse me. I haven't done these in a couple months. Um, but... It has Android 12 out of the box. It's going to get 13. You know, I mean, it's it's actually about to get the 13 beta any day from what I read yesterday. Um, you know, it, it's going to get 13 when the Pixel 7s come out. I mean, you know, in, in October and November. Um, you know, it's going to get three or four years of that, you know, of, of the latest, you know, Android updates. You know, four or five years of security updates or something like that, whatever that number is. I know, I know Samsung beats them out a little bit. Uh, but Samsung also doesn't release the latest Android updates immediately either. They have gotten quicker. They are probably the quickest ones now, you know, behind Google. I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they used to be, then they weren't, and then they and then they went back to being that company again, which is great. Which is great because that was one of the things that definitely made me, you know, five, six years ago, you know, not, you know, not, not be the biggest Samsung fan anymore. And I, you know, and I, I'm still not, that alone's not going to make me the biggest Samsung fan, mind you. But, um, you know, but it's great, you know, but in, again, even though Samsung does beat them by a year, they don't get them as quick as these phones do. And I mean, and really, you know, do you really see yourself having, I mean, this phone will definitely last, I'm sure, but I mean, <sighs> Even for those that don't upgrade that much and are pretty content with the phone for a couple of years, the key word is couple. I mean, do you really see yourself with this phone four years from now? I mean, I think it's great. This phone is freaking a beast. It's fantastic, but no. I, I, not not four years, let alone two years. Sorry, I just don't believe that. Um, really quick, because I know I'm making this entirely too long. I do want to talk about the fingerprint sensor on this thing right quick. That was a huge issue with the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. I experienced it myself. I had two 6s and two 6 Pros, and yes, the fingerprint sensor was garbage. It got it was even worse when I had a tempered glass screen protector on the phones. But I now while I don't have a, a screen protector on this phone yet, I do have one. I just haven't put it on yet. But just as it stands right here, if there's any upgrade to be had, if there's any upgrade to be had. When getting a 6A from a 6 and or 6 Pro, it's the fingerprint sensor. Fingerprint sensor on this is faster. It is more reliable. I mean, it's it's fantastic on this phone. It's it's still not the fastest overall fingerprint sensor, you know, compared to other manufacturers like the like the Xiaomi's that I use and the Red Magics, you know, the Realme's and the Pogos, etc. Uh, you know, the One Pluses, you know, definitely not the Samsungs, you know, but um, but. It is definitely faster than the 6 and 6 Pro. And yes, I use those phones with many updates. From what I've heard, the past couple of updates have actually fixed that. I haven't had one to test in a couple months. But, you know, again, I have to use the word couple as another keyword in a different subject. I It, was, it wasn't that long ago where I, where I didn't have a Pixel 6 or a Pixel 6 Pro to test the fingerprint sensor after a major update. And they did improve, but they still weren't this good. This is way better. I don't know if it's just better optimized or if it's just better hardware. But the fingerprint sense on this phone is way better to me. Um, I mean, I, I've just... I mean, again, it's not... 
it's, I mean, it's pretty fast. I mean, that was pretty fast considering I'm recording this, actually. Um, you know, it's not, you know, again, it's not, you know, $1,000 phone level fast. But it's definitely, you know, what you'd expect for a $500 phone. Um, I think it's great. And um, I, uh, I have no complaints. Um, another upgrade, in my opinion, is the cellular connectivity. Um, on AT&T and, and T-Mobile, uh, I experienced the uh, connection issues with the 6 and 6 Pro. With the, uh, with the 6A here, man, I get AT&T 5G everywhere. It works flawlessly. I, I expect the same with T-Mobile. Um, I haven't tested it with T-Mobile yet, but I expect the same again. It's, you know, it's, it's a world's difference. It doesn't go in and out like it did on my 6 and 6 Pro. Um, it's just been fantastic. But anyways, I'm just going to leave it at that, y'all. Um, you know, um, little status update. I, hey, uh, you know, got me an even better job. I, I left the job that I was at for seven years. So that's why I haven't been pushing out a bunch of these videos. Um, I have, I actually had a, a Pogo F4 and a Pogo X4 GT. Um, you know, I had the F4 for, shoot, a month and a half and the X4 GT for about three weeks now. Um, I actually had already gotten rid of the F4 before I could do a review or a video review on it anyways. Um, so I won't be releasing one on the F4, but I will be doing one on the X4 GT, which I should have had out before this, but I couldn't wait to do this. I was so proud of getting it as early as I did. Um, um, but I will definitely be doing one on the X4 Pro and in that video I will throw, you know, I will throw some, some things in there about the Pogo F4 and, you know, the differences between the two and what I think, what not, etc. So be on the lookout for that. I, I got a couple more smartwatches that I need to do. I do have the Red Magic 7S Pro coming in a couple weeks that I'll be doing a video on. So, um, I may also possibly, it's not set in stone yet, but I may also possibly get, um, a, uh, a Revel 6 Pro to do a review on. That is the, uh, I don't know if y'all have seen that announcement yet. T-Mobile announced it yesterday for T-Mobile and Metro by T-Mobile. It comes out, um, not this Friday, but next Friday, like August, uh, well, no, it's, it's on a Thursday. It's August 4th, if I'm not mistaken. And, um... You know, it's not manu it's not manufactured by Motorola or TCO like the like the previous generation Revel phones have been. They actually have supposedly been built closely with with Google, according to what T-Mobile has said. Uh, so it's kind of like cheaper Pixel alternatives exclusive to T-Mobile. Possibly they have Dimensity 700 chipsets, so definitely not definitely not comparable to the Tensor, but you know, still for you know, one is 160 or 180 bucks, and the other one's 220. I mean, that's you know, it's I mean, prices aren't you know even comparable to this at 450. So they sound like fantastic deals, and I'm gonna try to get my hands on that Pro to do a review on. Um, and as I said earlier, I do have a Steam Deck. If y'all want to see me do a little little, I, I say review, but these aren't reviews. But if y'all want to see me do an overview on the Steam Deck, let me know. I'll do one. But anyways, I will catch y'all in the next video. Sorry this was so boring. There just wasn't a lot to go over. And I know I just kept kind of going on and on. But nonetheless, I hope y'all enjoy it. Thanks, y'all. Peace out.